QuickBooks number four, dealing with vendors. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And you'll also find us on Facebook under St. Louis Test Prep. I'm going to jump over to the QuickBooks screen and we'll see that, again, that the screen is generally divided into three sections. Vendors, customers, and employees. I'm going to go to the vendor section and I'm going to go into enter bills. What we're seeing here is a bill. Big River Equipment Rental is our bill. That's our vendor. The bill is due on February 1st. Here's the address. We owe them $100. The bill is due basically one month from right now, within a few days. You'll notice on our prior video that we talked about discounts when it comes to things that we sell. In this case, we have a discount on bills that we're going to pay, which is 210 net 30. If I skip back to the last video, we found out that 210, meant 30, 210 net 30 meant a 2% discount if it's paid within 10 days. The entire bill is due with no discount in 30 days. So let's copy that over to the template I'm using for this vendor. If I go back to my bill here, you can see that the bill is due within a few days. I'm going to change that to March 1st. And I see that 10 days from the date that the invoice is gen that the bill is generated for me, within 10 days from the 1st to the 11th, if I pay within that period, I get a 2% discount. Here's my expense. You see when I enter it in the amount due code, that it automatically fills in the expense code. So if I change this, for example, to 150, the expense changes to 150. I selected an expense account that was already existing. I didn't, sol I didn't create a new one called repair and maintenance expense. This field fills under the amount, and it's the same as the expense field here and the amount due here. My memo section, I said we repaired a stump grinder, which is one of the things, a piece of equipment that I use in my business. I could apply it to a client if I click here, but I'm not. It's an overall expense for the company. It's not for one specific client. I'm going to hit Save and Close. It says you have changed the terms for Big River Equipment Repair. Would you like to have this information appear next time? I'm going to hit Yes. So you heard a click, and so now we've entered a bill. The next step is, number two, we're going to pay the bill within the discount period. So I go to QuickBooks. I was originally in the vendor enter a bill page. Now I'm going to pay a bill. So when I click on that field, I see select bills to be paid. I have the button selected that sh says show all bills and it's sorted by due date which I think is a good way if you're managing your business to show your bills. Here's all the bill information. It says discount and credit information for highlighted bill. We're going to see that in a minute. Payment method I'm going to be paying by check. Payment amount. Here's the ending balance of my cash account which is handy payment date. Look at what happens when I enter a due date of February 5th, which is within the discount period. The due date, or the, the invoice was created on the 1st. The discount date, which is listed here, is the 11th. If I pay on the 5th, I'm within the discount period date. And look what happens to the section here where it talks about discount and credit information. The terms are 210 net 30. The suggested discount is $3, which would be 2% of that $150. And then we have a button that says set discount. So I clicked on the set discount button, and here's what came up. It says discounts and credits. Vendor, date, original amount, discount used. This is similar to the process that we used when 
one of our customers got a sales discount when we sold something in the last video. So we've got a date, term, suggested discount, amount of discount. Now, we need to enter this discount account somewhere. So just like I did on the prior video, I'm going to click on here. And what's happening here is that my expense is going to be lowered. My expense is going to be lowered and this is going to reduce my expense. This is going to reduce my expense. The accounting gets a little more complicated, but it's a nice way to recognize that you're taking advantage of discounts. You'll also note the amount to pay is $147. Um, we probably don't want to post it to an income account. Let's look at some of the accounts that we have here. And I'm looking down, I've got income accounts, I've got expense accounts. You'll see here's when we did our prior video, our income and the sales discount account that offset the income. So what I'm doing at this point is thinking about what account do I want to create to post that $3 discount. What we found out in the last video was it was difficult to put a negative balance in an account in QuickBooks. We tried last time to um, create a negative balance in the income category to offset the income. I'll do something different this time. This is an expense account. I have an expense of $150 that's going to be reduced by $3. What if I create an income account called Purchase Discounts Taken? Then this $3 income account would offset my $150 expense, so in terms of my income statement, I'd be okay. It's a different approach from what we did last time. Let's just do that and see what we come up with. So I'm going to hit Save and Close. So what the system is going to do with this discount or credit when I pay the bill it's going to post it to a purchase discount taken account, which is an income account, which will net $3 of income against $150 expense, so we end up with $147 net expense. So I'm going to hit Done. So now that I've decided how I'm going to account for the discount, I'm going to pay it by check. I'm going to pay it through my checking account. Here's the ending balance. I'm going to pay it on the 5th. I'm going to hit Pay Selected Bill. And I heard a click. After hearing that click, what I see now is Payment Summary. Pay date, Amount, Checking Account, Payment Method by Check, Due Date, Vendor, Amount Paid. So I'm going to hit Done. So what we've done so far is we entered a bill that had a discount. We paid the bill. Now let's see what happened with the checking account. If I go to my checking account, I'm just going to go to my check register and see what's going on. So here's my check register, date, number and type. Let's talk about number and type for a minute. You can see these under type. This GEN means general journal entry, where I made an entry to create my opening balance. I had a deposit of $250. We talked about that on a prior video. Here's my check for my bill payment for $147. Here's the general journal entry from the last video to correct for the sales discount. And here are undeposited funds that I have that got deposited to my account. So that is how my checking account looks. So what we've seen so far, if we look at my Excel document, sort of my running procedures manual, we entered a bill. The terms were 210 net 30, which I explained. We paid the bill within the discount period. To recognize the discount, we created an account called Purchase Discount Taken that was an income account. That income account offset the expense account so that my net expense after the discount was 
and we paid by check. Let's now go in and look at some of the reports that were created as a result of this last transaction. And run, we, run report that I like that sort of shows everything. If I go to reports, custom transaction detail, I'm going to select a date and I'm going to go to this fiscal year today, which changes the date range from 1-1 to 12-15, which is the last date that I did some activity on. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see the transactions that I've done so far. Now let's look at the fifth. Here's our Big River equi Equipment. We created a payable by crediting, created a liability, and we have repair and maintenance expense of $150. Then if I go down a little further, on Big River. I reduced my payable by debiting and I wrote a check. And I also have a debit to accounts payable and a credit to purchase discount which was the income account. Now let's agree the information that we saw on the custom transaction detail to what goes on in a spreadsheet in a T account. So if I go to Big River on the first, I had a payable repair and maintenance expense credit to create a liability, and I had a debit, I'm sorry, a repair and maintenance expense debit for 150 debit, accounts payable created a liability 150 credit. So let's go over here. In blue we have Repair and maintenance expense 150, accounts payable was increased 150. If I skip down to when the bill was paid, I see checking was credited to dec decrease at 147, the accounts payable was reduced by 147. Let's go back over here. In red, cash goes down by credit 147, so what we had 147 actual cash pay. Accounts payable is debited to reduce it by 147. And then lastly for Big River we had accounts payable debited for $3 and we had an account purchase discounts taken which is an income account credit to increase it for $3. So you'll see in black here accounts payable debit $3 purchase discounts taken credit $3. So where we end up with is we have a repair and maintenance expense less an income account so we end up with net $147 expense. Accounts payable is zeroed out after we pay the bill and we wrote a check for $147. Let's go to our financial statements and see how they look. Report company financial let me go to profit and loss detail. Here's the income section of my report and we'll see that we have purchase discount taken of three dollars which nets out against that expense. If I slide down I've got repair and maintenance expense of 150 which nets against the three dollar discount I took. So my profit and loss detail looks good. Let's go to the balance sheet reports, company financial, balance sheet detail. Okay. My checking account balance was correctly reduced by 147. If I slide down to my liability section, I'll see that my accounts payable was originally $150. It was reduced by writing a check for $147 and reduce by recognizing income for three. Those are the two items that reduce my accounts payable, so now I have a zero accounts payable balance. That's as far as we're going to get on QuickBooks 4. Continuous Classroom is where we have weekly chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, we have a complete list of all of our videos on YouTube on our website. 
Hemboid STL's YouTube channel. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.